For today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how to convert units using a process called dimensional analysis. Now, this may seem like kind of a strange jump to do today. Um, however, it really fits in nicely in our in, into our course. Um, when we're working with any type of numbers in, in mathematics, almost always we're trying to solve some sort of a problem in the real world. So it's very rare that we just have a number answer, but we often have a measurement of something uh, that would require some sort of a unit associated with it. And sometimes you need to report units in different ways. Uh, you need to transfer between one method or another. Our formula may require a certain format uh, in order for you to do something. So we need to be very comfortable in not only remembering that our values have units that we should worry about, but in knowing how to switch back and forth between them. So here are some typical problems. These are kind of some simpler conversion problems. Changing, centi uh, changing inches into centimeters, quarts to pints, pounds to kilograms, miles to feet. And you may know some of the numbers that are associated with this, and sometimes we multiply and sometimes we divide, um, and you could get to what the answer is. Uh, however, today what we'd like to do is we'd like to learn a new process called dimensional analysis. And this is a special process. It's very commonly used in chemistry and in physics to convert between units. And we're going to start by doing some simple problems here like this one. And we'll progress to sol solving some multi-step problems where dimensional analysis is super helpful in keeping us from getting lost in our process. Uh, the other reason I like to introduce dimensional analysis right now is that it's very similar to multiplying fractions, um, which we just covered. So in this particular problem, for example, I'm going to start out with 43 inches. And what I want to do is I want to multiply by something that's not going to change my problem at all. Now normally what we can do is we can multiply um, any number by 1 and that doesn't change the problem. So we are going to multiply by a very, very clever form of 1. All right, to do that, what we're going to use is we're going to use something called a unit fraction. So we let's go up here and let's divide, define this. So sometimes we use the term unit factor, sometimes we use the term unit fraction, and sometimes we use uh, the word conversion instead of unit. So maybe conversion factor or conversion fraction. Any of those terms kind of mean the same thing. But what's important is that when we write that fraction, that fraction is equal to 1. So whatever we have on the top and whatever we have on the bottom have to be equal in size and measurement. So it's a very super clever form of 1. Now in the problem that we were solving down um, there in, at the very beginning, we were looking at something between inches and centimeters. So if you look here on our form, we've got a, a conversion factor between 1 inch and 2.54 centimeters. So we can write 1 inch and 2.54 centimeters like this, and this is in fact kind of like equal to 1 because the measurement on top is being divided by the measurement on the bottom and they're the same relative size. So this is kind of a cool way to write a conversion factor. Another conversion factor, we could put the 2.54 centimeters on the top and the 1 inch on the bottom, and that's another way that we could write a conversion factor. Again, it's a nice version of the number 1 because what's on top and what's on bottom are equal in relative size. So how can we use that to solve our particular problem? Let's go back. Here I have 43 inches. Right now, if I think in terms of fractions, it's kind of like 43 over 1. I've got inches are my unit on top, so I'm going to put the inches unit on the bottom, and I want to convert and two centimeters. So this is the version of the number that I want to put together. Now when I go to solve this, what's going to happen, because units actually behave just like numbers when we're dealing with multiplying fractions, and we can divide out anything that's in common on the top and the bottom. So the inches unit on the top is going to cancel out with the inches unit on the bottom and leave me behind with centimeters, which is neat. So what we want to do as we do these problems is set these up in a way that our units are going to cancel. Now it's just kind of fill in the blank. So what I have to do here is I have to go, well, what do I, are there any things that I know where centimeters and inches are equal? And based on what we saw on the other page in that conversion table was that 2.54 centimeters and 1 inch were exactly the same in size and measurement. So we can come over here, the inches cancel, I'm left with this that's remaining, 
And now my answer is going to be in centimeters. And the number is going to, that's going to be my solution is going to come from basically solving this fraction. Now, if you remember our rules for multiplying fractions, we multiply across the top and we multiply across the bottom. So let's start with that. I have to do 43 point times um, 2.54. Let me pull my calculator up here. 43 times 2.54. helps to turn the calculator on. Let's try that again. 43 times 2.54 and that gives me a solution of 109.22 on the top and then 1 times 1 gives me 1 on the bottom and then remember that a fraction bar also means divide so I can divide 109.22 by 1 and I get 109.22 and the only unit that was left remaining after the inches canceled was centimeters and so that's a way that I can set up my conversion fraction. Again this may not seem super fast um, compared to other methods that you have in your brain but we're trying to set up and learn a process and getting used to seeing these units cancel will be really really critical as our problems get more complex um, in the next couple of videos. So let's do a couple more examples just to make sure we know how this works. Here I'm going to start with 13 quarts. I'm going to be needing to work with fractions, so think of that as 13 over 1. And now I want to mul multiply by a very clever version of 1. So the clever version that I want, I want to get rid of quarts, so I'm going to put quarts on the bottom. Again, make sure the units work before you ever put any numbers into this. This will get my quarts to cancel, and I want to change it to pints, so I'm going to put pints up here on top. Now I just need to know an equivalency between pints and quarts. Well, if you don't know, go ahead and look up on a sample conversion table. I've got one in your book that you can refer to, um, or you can look it up on Google. But in this particular case, we're looking for pints and quarts. Notice that there's two pints and one quart. So we can fill that in. All right, now notice that the quarts units cancel. I'm left with pints remaining behind. And now I just solve. 13 times 2 on the top gives me 26. 1 times 1 on the bottom gives me 1. I divide and that gives me 26. And the units that were left after dividing out any common terms was pints. So 13 quarts and 26 pints are the same. Okay, here's another one. This time I've got 258 pounds. And I want to change it to kilograms. Right now the pounds are on the top. So when I go to multiply by a clever conversion fraction, I'm going to need to put pounds on the bottom. I'd like to change it to kilograms. Let's go up and see what we've got on our chart. So I'm looking somewhere. Pounds and kilograms are in weights. So if I look over here, let's see, that's pounds and grams. Um, uh, but here's a kilogram in pounds, so we can just use the one that shows up there. One kilogram is 2.205 pounds. So one kilogram is 2.205 pounds. Notice this time the 2.205, the number part, ended up in the denominator, and that's fine. All that's important is whatever the measurement on the top is has to be equal to whatever the measurement on the bottom is. Again, double check and make sure those pounds cancel, and I'm left just with kilograms. Multiply across the top, 258 times 1 is 258. 1 times 2.205 is 2.205, and then I just need to divide those numbers to come up with my solution. Um, again, I'll pull this up on the calculator. Oh, I lost my file there. Where'd we go? There we go. Let's try that again. 258 divided by 2.205 gives me 117, we'll round to two places, so 0 0.01. And my solution will be in kilograms. Again, for rounding purposes, usually one or two digits after the decimal is fine, unless a particular problem gives you a more specific requirement. For the last one here, we've got 22 miles, and we'd like to change that into feet. So think of that as 22 on the top. I want to change between miles and feet. Miles needs to cancel, so it has to be on the bottom for that to work out. And then I want to change to feet. Um, notice that that will get the miles to cancel and my feet to be left behind. If you don't, uh, if you don't know the number of miles in a feet, we can go up and check our conversion chart. Um, 
Here we have 5,280 feet and one mile, so let's go and fill that in. Uh, 5,280 feet and one mile. This time the number was up on the top, so I've got to do 22 times by 5,280. And I end up with 116,160. Make sure I remembered that right. 116,160, awesome. And we want to divide that by one on the bottom, so it's just 116,160 miles. Oh, sorry. Miles canceled, and I'm left with feet. So there are 116, just over 116,000 feet and 22 miles. Uh, in the next video, couple videos, we'll see how we can extend this process of getting those units to cancel to solve even more complicated conversion required problems.